Welcome to another episode of Love Notes. This is Tequita Love, a nurse and a comedian. You think you could bring your brother the clear machine home? You know the revival. <laughs> and I'm talking to my funny friends about medical mishaps. Clear! You are listening to Love Notes. What's up, y'all? This is Tequita Love, and you're listening to another episode of Love Notes, where I, a comedian and a nurse, uh, talk to some of my friends, my funny friends, about our journeys together in the comedy world, as well as share some of our medical mishaps. So today, I have one of the funniest women I've met in Los Angeles, uh, whom I met through uh, Sketch and Improv World. Um, who is now a comedian, uh, actress, uh, writer. Y'all welcome to Haley Hall. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, girl, how are you? I'm just going to start with that. It's been good. I, it's been, I'll just say this. I've been having a lot of, like, uh, ups and downs. But it's, like, not... I've been very fortunate during this pandemic. Like nothing terrible has happened to me. Um, been able to like get keep afloat. Um, still working on a lot of different projects. Been very prolific on the creative tip. You know, uh, have a roof over my head. All that stuff. But like it just the world around me and all of my people and friends. Like it. It's got me shook a little bit, and I've I've had to like um, have develop a lot of inner strength through through this process yeah. to not be like waylaid uh, and like demoralized by it all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 2020 is like a page turner. It is like a nail biter. It is a thriller, a blockbuster thriller. Like, yeah. I don't even know what's going to happen next week. It is all of that. It's like you want to turn the page, but do you really know want to know what's going to happen next? That's how I feel. It's like I still work as a nurse. And I'm working in research. So, you know, while the world, most of my friends, uh, especially in entertainment, you know, where things have slowed down and, and productions have stopped, everybody's been like, oh, what am I going to do? And I've been working. Like, I have been working, like, still, like, nonstop um, as a nurse and then also um, creating and writing and, you know, developing my jokes more and doing online shows. But um, it is, it's like, it's a crazy time right now. Um the, I don't have anything, I don't like positive. I do like, we're still alive. We, we making it, we still thriving. Um, but it's, 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 you know, it's one to, it's one for the books. I say <laughs> it's like one to be like, Whoa, we got through that. We get yeah. through it every day. And I'm just like to get up and brush my teeth in the morning. It's like, you know, I, I can, I'll be like, good job to like, <laughs> that, that you're doing. No, but I it. think, that's a great attitude to have. I think like we need to like take in all the small victories. Like, yeah. yeah. But the other thing that I've been like having to do and it's been very challenging is like to just try to keep a smile on my face during stuff. Like I like, and not no matter what is happening to me and I've not been succeeding at this at all. Uh, like just this morning, like I woke up and I made some like, pumpkin bread that I got from Trader Joe's. The house smells like, like, like pumpkin and spice. And I thought, you know, this is, I went on a walk with my dog. I was like, this is going to happen. And then like right away I could like sense some like grumpiness creeping in and I had to try to find a way to keep it at bay. You know, I was like, I'm going to see Tequila in a few. So I've got to keep it together. <laughs> and honestly, if I can be completely honest with you, like I, uh, you know, initially I did my podcast in a studio. Um, and and then now during the pandemic, I got to a point where like I like I literally missed the normal interaction with people, um, especially like doing my during CP time at UCB, um, mm-hmm. the variety show that we were doing monthly. Um, yeah. And so like that would be like, just to to know that every month I'm going to see people, I'm going to be on stage, I'm going to, you know, like that part of me, you know, you don't realize yeah. how much it helps or how much yes. it makes you feel so good until you don't do it. So like 
a part of me was like, you know, like I, I started to do my podcast um, virtually. And for one, it could have been selfish reasons because I'm like, I want to connect to people that, you know, are funny and I like. But also it's kind of like I miss y'all, you know. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, yes. I'm talking into you. I miss, you know, seeing you, uh, pro, you know, posting or promoting. I miss you coming through to CP right. time and doing characters and hosting and just being supportive. Like all of that stuff you take for granted when it's not there because we're so used to having it. So that was one of the reasons I was like, I got to get the Haley on. And I thought of you because I would get a reminder literally on my phone, like once a month when it's supposed to be CP time. The um, Oh, really? Oh, that's so funny. Because I had it in my calendar. And, um, <laughs> and then I'm like, I miss y'all. I miss my people. So yeah. there you go. So it, it, it's definitely like a way for me too to stay connected to this world that is uncertain on when we going when we going to be able to see each other safely again, you know? Mhm. Yeah. Mhm. For so, sure. <laughs> but no, I, I feel you. So I'm happy. So go ahead. What have Okay, this is kind of scandalous. Do I was talking to a friend the other day about having Pan pandemic buddies have you developed pandemic partners buddies friends like little peeps to like physically be in the same room with you know what i have not oh oh okay like i went through a breakup right before the yes. pandemic so then yes. you know like I, I think you know like I, low key, like I didn't even realize it was a pandemic until like a month ago because I was still like dealing with, um, right, like the you know the grieving process of any any anything when you you know when you break up with somebody or you lose something or some like a job anything, so right. you know, like I think um, the normal reaction to like be out in the streets and to meet people and to hang out and to like you know I wanted like a you know to like be have like a corona. Buddy. Yeah, you needed a pause. You needed a little break. Right. And like, and I didn't realize I needed one until I had one. And I'm just like, this girl, is same. When the when the Rona hit, I was like, you know what? Low key, this is great. Can I get a couple of months not to be worried about going out there and like because that, sometimes in this industry you always have this FOMO, this fear of missing out. Like, oh, should I have done that set or gone to this party, gone try to push my thing out? Am I not doing enough with my uh, promoting my work, putting much, enough content out there? Uh, I gotta, 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 gotta. And then, so I was like, oh, great. The world is taking a break. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but now it's like uh, oh, yeah. almost over the, it's over almost more than half the year. You're just kind of like, oh, <laughs> exactly. wait, it's, yeah. it's hitting me now. Well, for me, like I made a goal. I'm like, I need to clean my closet. And when it was like pandemic, stay at home. And I'm like, okay, now I can work on these little projects that I kept ignoring. And when I tell you my closet still is a mess, I'm like, I need a little bit more time before the world opened back up so I could finish the things I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. just really for me, the social interaction with people, like for me to like do stand up every night or to go out every night, you know, like that part of me, like it's, 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 it's almost like I'm grieving that too. You know, it's almost yeah, like for sure. that too. So there's, there's, and we try to adjust like with, you know, making adjustments like online shows and, but it's not the same. Um, it's not. So. It's not, it's not the same. Yeah. It, but, it, it is not. But we're here and you know, I'm, I'm happy. But I'm also glad you didn't boomerang back because sometimes people like during these pandemics, these are the times that people are like, oh, hey, let me get that terrible relationship that I, but I, because of what's happening, I need to, you know, <laughs> no shade, no shade or shame to anyone who is currently doing that right now because it, it's lonely out there. But, um, but that it's like the perfect time to like, creep back into your vices because you're like, what the, the, the pandemic, like, I'm always so impressed by the people who are like trying to clean out their closets like you, or who are like, this is my time to get my six pack because the, uh, because you could also just go the other way of like, let me just 
fully dive into this Ben and Jerry's. I'm not going to just do a pint. I'm going to do a gallon. Um, uh, I'm just going to watch all the TV there is and stay and not shower for a week because <laughs> nobody cares. You know, no, so I have been there, though. I'm not going to even lie. <laughs> I have definitely been there. Um, but I yeah. think the whole like this is so this is crazy because like I was talking to somebody about the whole pandemic. My last relationship did not work out because the person couldn't keep a job. Uh, they laid around the house all day, just, you know, waiting for a check in the mail from the government. Right. And then the pandemic hit. Now, none of the dudes got jobs. They all was waiting around for a check, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, felt like, <laughs> I felt like, you know, he was kind of ahead of his time. I think he was like, you know what, both <laughs> in the back, watch. Watch and see. Um, watch and see. But no. But I, how did you... How did you feel like that's so true because everyone else wasn't working, but then here you are as a nurse on the front lines, like right in the Rona, right in the eye of the storm. Did that, like, were you, I'm sure the first couple of months must have been like a nightmare for you. Well, you know what, for honestly, you know, like when you're dealing with, with stuff, like for me, like I have a purpose to get up. I have a purpose Mm. to get up, brush my teeth you know, cook breakfast, go to work. And, um, and I work in research. So like our department was busy. It was nonstop. Mm -hmm. It was around the clock. It was normal job duties. And then there was, now we got a coronavirus in there in, in research. Um, and now we got like clinical trials for the medicine for, for coronavirus or COVID-19. I always use the analogy, like if you see somebody, you know, that needs help and they like fall right in front of you, you're going to like, you will probably like lose self and you would do what it takes to help that person. And I think that's what happened um, work-wise. It's kind of mm-hmm. like, yeah, you see all these numbers of people dying and then you saw, I mean, it's just like, okay, uh, you know, like feed the dog. And then now it's back to the computer for work or back to communicating. And it was just one of those things where like, right. In my field, this is what we're supposed to do. Like you do right. it because somebody needs help because you could help save a life or, you know, like, it's a nonstop. And so, you know, I actually am, I'm proud and happy to be a part of, you know, I think it's history. I would say I'd be a part of history and working yeah. during that time or during this time where, it, you know, we haven't been here before. And I hate to say it because everybody's like, oh, it's, you know, it's a horrible time and it is. But for me, it's, it's, it's been a much needed break. Like I binge watch Grey's Anatomy, like during the pandemic. Oh, you did? The whole thing. Oh. 17 uh, seasons of it, Girl, 47 oh seasons. <laughs> probably not the right show to binge. <laughs> uh, 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 I was crying the whole time, girl. And I was like, oh, no. They... <laughs> yeah. It's so good. But but I wanted to just, you know, like get get a little bit of insight about your world and your life because there's some things about you that, of course, you know, when we met, um, I know we met dur- during or, you know, in the uh, improv sketch world, you know? Yes. And yes. Uh, and from that, you know, like I know you, um, you were an original host for um, CP Time, which is the the monthly show that was w- the monthly variety show to hire yeah. diverse talent at UCB. Um, and, you know, in one day, you know, me and you talked and there was this transfer of like, you're, you're too, I'm getting too busy in a great way with, <laughs> which is what I, you know, in your world. And it was like, we want to hand this, you know, down to somebody who could probably handle it properly. And I thank you for right. that because, oh, um, yeah. so that, that was our, that was the world, but I know you of a talent. I know you uh, to be a dope writer. I know you to be um, a dope director. But I wanted to know mm-hmm. what your journey was like because, you know, I initially I didn't know that you uh, were a writer um, on Dear White People, which is on Netflix. Um, yeah. And, you know, I heard, you know, I'm just like, what? No wonder she, you know, had to make moves. Um, <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> no, I mean, the thing with the UCB part was like, I'm very glad you took it over. What, what, I mean, I could go back, but I think the UCB part is important to talk about because I had come to that community to try to be like, oh, this is the, you know, I'm going to get on their teams and like, you know, get some like exposure 
and like uh, meet some people. But I just felt like it was just such a slog to try to be a part of that community. If you if you wanted to be like in the community community, like in the on those teams on the because there were so many people who were like very hateration in the dancery. But what I loved about it is all the fringe community, like the people I met from there, like people like you and like all the side stuff you could do, like at the, um, at the inner sanctum and stuff where you didn't have to like go through the artistic directors or, or uh, like get audition or what have you, uh, you could do a lot more things. And so that was where CP time came. I was just like, well, I'd love to see you to highlight people of color on the shows and like not feel like I have to do a dance and like, uh, like ingratiate myself. I mean, I feel like I was ingratiating myself a lot with them because I, you know, was a, um, what do you call it? Uh, an intern. And, uh, like I worked on the door. I did a lot of free work there. So, uh, in, in exchange for classes and different things like that, but I was just like, you know, I had, I had come there like where like a few years earlier I was on my TV. So it felt like humbling anyway, to be like, hi, I'm going to work the door, but still felt like I couldn't like get into the, 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 what do you call it? The, 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 the main page of UCB yeah. on the on their website, but like they'll claim you later though, like they, they definitely claim you later. Um, if if things pop off in your career, they'll be like, she was always one of us. Yeah. But that's why I was so happy to meet you through it because that was the benefit of the program. It was like meeting people like you and then getting to like work on independent projects through it and and like. You know, and and it, it's also what made me realize, like, why am I like killing myself to try to be a part of these communities when I could just be making my own content, making my own work like I used to do in the past. But what happens sometimes with your journey is like you get on a TV show, like, for example, Matt TV, and then you see checks with like a comma in it and you just like forget about like writing your own stuff anymore. You're just like, I need to do whatever it takes to like stay in the orbit of Hollywood, like whatever they need. I want to make sure that I always get a check. I, I always have a parking space. And then it kind of like robs you from like your own independent spirit, like a little bit. Yeah. So, um, um, but yeah, I, I could go through my list of how it all began, but I just thought that that was an important thing to yeah, mention. You know, and I, I think it's important that you mentioned that because one thing that I love about you and um, and this is one thing that I've learned by working with you and hosting with you um, is that you created a lane. Right. And then you invited people that would be productive in that lane you created, which was like, you know, I thought it was dope because like I, I was working on characters. I wasn't confident with my characters. And you're like you and Lisa um, Timmons. Um, you know, come come on the show and do stand up. Come on the be our special guest for this. And I think that that is something, especially being a woman of color, um, you know, that is is necessary because we don't necessarily get people, you know, that created a lane for for what they do, you know, and then also, you know, invite somebody else in who would benefit <laughs> from the, you know, just being in that world because we all know. It, a lot of a lot of success is networking. You know, a lot of it yes. is who you know. And I just thought it was dope because here I am. I'm 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 kind of like in all the worlds, the improv, the sketch, the stand up, but heavily in stand up. And then it was kind of like pulling me back to my roots. Like, come on, like you need to do your own, produce your mm-hmm. own. And it'll be difficult, but you can do it. And when you do it, you you just keep doing it and you keep promoting and keep producing. And that was one thing that, you know, that's a seed that you guys, um, you know, uh, planted in me, you know, by like saying, you know what, we think you think you can handle this, you know? Yeah, I think that's so good that you mentioned that. I mean, when CPT started, it was just like a thought of like, who do I really want to work with and who do I like? And I, it was at the, it started with um, Lisa Timmons, like you mentioned, Shukri Abdi and Jessica Eason. And they, I was like, you all, we're all doing our own things and stuff. Like, wouldn't it be great? 
I, and I never get to see you guys. It's just basically like what you were saying about your podcast. It's like, I never get to see you guys in that way. I was on a indie team with Lisa, but I was like, it'd be great for us to like all kind of work together. And um, it was kind of problematic with Lisa because Lisa is um, half Latina. And she was like, I think people just think I'm a white lady up here, but, <laughs> but it, it worked out anyway. Um, but it was just like, how can I meet more people and like work with more people? And then, and then the other thing too, is like you said, we can't hold on to things for too long. Like you want to see, I really wanted it to continue. And I wanted to be able to like, um, experiment, try out different stuff. Like I, I hadn't done a lot of improv before. Uh, I was more in sketch and then stand up, And so that was an ability for me to try out improv more on stage. And then I was like, if I'm experimenting, then anybody else here who wants to just be, it's low stakes. Nobody, nobody cares. Uh, we're all going to be very supportive of you to try out your stuff. Cause that's like the way you become a better artist is by like hundreds of hundreds of hours of trying it but if you're always afraid and you every every time you're doing it's for like the showcase that's going to get you the job then you never have a chance to like experiment and fail and and learn from it yeah well I appreciate you and I really like that was that's a moment in my career that it was like you know I wasn't thinking about producing my own show you know like mm. I wasn't, you know and I didn't was, know that no, it was one of those things where I, you know, like you get sucked into, you know, like, are you at a club once a week? You know, like, mm -hmm. and I was hosting at Flappers once a week, but, you know, it wasn't my own thing. It wasn't like, you know, I couldn't, you know, explore the world. And I know a lot of people who yeah, would love to do characters and like love to put their sketches up and love to do improv. And it was just one of those things where it was like, you know, like, it fell in my lap and it was, it was perfect for me. Like, and I needed it and it, it made me, you know, it made me dig into the crates and put more work into my talent. Um, yeah. So that was, dope. So that I, is awesome. yeah. And I, I, and I have to, I know I, I threw some shade to UCB at the beginning, but I do, I really appreciate them having that space, to, yeah. space and stage for us to be able to do that. I mean, it's, it's always hard to, um, and and I think the reason why I brought that up is not to like necessarily um, drag them, but to mention that it's important to to not always be looking to try to be like on this like on the team. It's, a, it's about finding opportunities wherever they are and taking advantage of it. Like as if you keep looking to try to get like on this stage, <clears throat> you kind of forget like all these other stages that are around you that are possible. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Um, this is great. <laughs> uh, I was going to tell you, what was I going to tell you? Um, oh, well, I forgot the question you were going to ask me earlier, but you'll tell me. Oh yeah. No, no, no. I know that you, um, you were a writer, um, and also an, uh, a, a cast member for, Oh, for Mad TV, yes. Yes, sorry, for Mad TV, and that I didn't know about you um, initially. Um, you know, I didn't know your history in entertainment, and you know, when we first met, and it was one of those things where, like, now it's like, you know, to hear that you just sold a show, um, or I don't know how long ago it was, but to, it's new to me. What was that yes. process like? Um, to, I mean, you're just a dope creator hands down and your energy is like ridiculous in a good way like you don't stop you always you know to me working with you is like life of the party energy and it's always go time it's always supportive and it's like you know every day isn't you know every day isn't like that but you definitely bring that like component of performing and creating um you know in a positive way so you know. Thanks, Sequita. Well, don't <laughs> let the smooth taste fool you. I mean, I, a lot of my collaborators would be like, oh, this lady has some moves. She is up and down. But that is what an artist is, right? Like some, okay. like uh, we, it's highs and lows and, you know, and everything in between. But um, no, I mean, I think for a long time, it was very hard. The reason why you don't know a lot of those things was it was like a, a hard time to kind of like, feel like I needed to tell people that or like show it. I felt like 
like listing my resume or my credits or being like, I went to, I have an MFA from USC. I went to uh, NYU, uh, um, studied theater. Like um, whatever it was, I felt like I was being like pretentious or kind of like throwing in these things. But what I now realize is that it's important to like, to like let, these are things that I worked really hard for. And there, and I am, there's not a, it's not pretentious to like claim these things and to be proud of these achievements, of but also to understand that they don't define me as like, I'm just important because of these things. Yeah. Like it's, it's, so I was having to try to like balance that for a while. And for a while I thought it wasn't necessary to bring it up and that's not actually the best way either. So um, I, um, when I left New York for undergrad at uh, NYU, I, um, started doing stand-up mostly because I couldn't really get acting gigs. Um, it was like the first time I recognized like school was different than the actual industry. I was like, Oh, got it. And so stand-up was so dope because, you know, you are crafting your materials. So the first time that you become like your own producer and you're making your own content and you're on stage seeing if it works like right then and there. But as you know, as a stand up yourself, it's, it, it requires a lot of you. It's, it's a nighttime gig. It's around a lot of dudes. It's a lot of like, not, and not that anything is wrong with this, but like there were so many dick jokes and, um, fucked up. Oh, can I say, can I curse on this? I think it's funny that everybody asks me that because they know that I'm not foul mouth. Um, but no, you can <laughs> you can talk talk in real life. By the way, you saying foul mouth hurt that I I'm foul mouth seems like some judgment to me. That <laughs> no, I you know what it's like. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just saying I. <laughs> I was just saying there was a lot of stuff on stage where it was foul. It was dirty. It was disrespectful. But it's also in the spirit of jokes. And as a female in that industry, I loved it, but it was also very taxing, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, also, someone like you totally understands this. Like, I, I was able to work sometimes well-paid day jobs. But then if you do that, then it kind of affects your like nighttime performance. So it was, it was like a challenging balance. Um, and, but I was doing a lot of stand up and, and mostly doing a lot of characters in my stand up. And I actually did a show to Greta. This is my first foray into characters. I don't know if you know this girl, but I was on hell date, BET's hell date. No, I did not know, but you know, there are some comedians that, um, that were on that show. I think Donovan George. Yes. Zainab. Zainab was where, that's how I met Zainab. Yeah. I, re- yeah, mm-hmm. I remember seeing the show and then recognizing those two when I met them later as stand-ups. Yeah. But, so how was, <laughs> that was <laughs> it's, it was so funny, but that was way back in the day. How was that? That was way back in the day. So that was like 2007. So, yeah. Um, it was great. I really thought, this was like, I was really young and I thought like, um, I was so excited about it because, uh, you know, I basically got to be a character for a whole like arc, you know, like one way you're basically jazzy in the first act. And then by the end you get progressively crazier and crazier until they prank you and say, you've been on hell date. So initially you're supposed to seem like the date that they've always wanted. And then you end with the date, they their nightmare date. And so, but it was also my first time understanding like what they do to women on t- screen. So I had a lot of, uh, a, I didn't have a lot of um, episodes, but my episodes were always really funny and like h- hilarious because I would always go there. Like I wasn't afraid to be like ridiculous. And I was like, it seems like people really love my episodes. Why can't I get a little bit more? And I remember the producers of the show being like, well, we really want a hot girl in the, that the guys are trying to like be with. And then, then it turns crazy. So it's like, you, (laughs) you are basically not a hot girl. And so even though your episodes are fun and hilarious, we, that's the journey that we want. And then I was like, oh, oh my gosh. 
And I remember being like, well, if you need me to like stuff my bra and like wear a wig so that it could seem like I have a weave or what have you, I'm down to do that. Like, this is all a character. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just such a like a revelation of like how the women on that show were kind of used as bait, like it sexualized bait. So that then they could get ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. there were guys on that show where, who were just like average. Like, I don't, I think I'm very cute, but they were cute. They weren't like, damn, who is this? But for the women, they needed them. They, the producers was like, we'd like them to seem like models and then have it be, uh, go down in flames, which I thought was very interesting. I mean, that's a good point and a t- like a good point that you mentioned because it is one of those, those, I mean, I think entertainment is one of those worlds too, where it's like, it's the perception of, you know, what somebody thinks, uh, is, is, is like, uh, like a hot girl or a teen. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it's for me and what I've learned and living in LA is everybody is, can be a 10. Like you can walk yes, down. Yes, girl, you, anybody. You can walk down sunset and go to any shop and get nails. You can get eyelashes. You can get wigs. You can get outfits. You can get, you know, like, I mean, they're like, whatever you want, it, it, they mm-hmm. can build it. So I, you know, I think that's one thing I learned that it's kind of like, who cares what somebody, you know, thinks is, it's beautiful or dope or it's like you know like like you said you was like look the, give me a wig and throw some and stuff this bra and let's get it popping and I think that that <laughs> yeah and also the thing that they didn't realize which was I thought was very sad is like my first beat with the guys was really connecting with them because they tell you like little things that they like and stuff. So the first beat, you actually have an opportunity to organically be everything that they've wanted to. Like you have like a little sheet that's like, you know, he likes the, the red skins, he, which is terrible because it's an offensive team name, but uh, he likes um, the Lakers. He uh, used to play basketball in uh, high school. Um, he, he has a sister um, who um, does crochet. So then you can like organically bring that up and then have him be like, oh, wow, this is so much. We have so much in common. And that so there's more to than just like him looking at big boobs, um, right. you know, t- to have him start to like you, you know? And that's how and relationships are anyway. <laughs> for real, girl. <laughs> for real. Um, but yeah, so from there, I, I was, it was, it was at that time that I was also doing groundlings and I was also hitting a wall with groundlings too. So with, with um, hell date, I was hitting a wall because they wanted me they were like, you're not the hot girl, but with groundlings, they, I was hitting a wall because, um, they felt like I wasn't hanging out enough and look at getting to know the people enough. And they just didn't know who I was, which is like, kind of like back in the day, that's like speak for like white people need to make you need to feel more comfortable with you. And they're not. And I was also working on my own short films, which got like, like licensed to HBO, um, I had a short called The Memo and a short called Man- the um, Mandigo in a Box. And so I was like, well, I'm just doing my own things. So like, it seems like these people are not getting me. But then right after that, I got Mad TV and it felt like such a like, like I told you so to yeah. everybody. Like, see, hell date. See groundlings, see all those uh, teacher or uh, auditions that I went to where they're like, we don't know what to do with you. I, and then it was also a time that we, uh, so, but it was also my first time on the show. And I was also very like shot, shot, not shy, but it was also like, you know, when you get your dream and you're like, it's like surreal, surreal. And so there were all these like great performers. I was on with like uh, uh, Keegan Michael Key, Bobby Lee, Jordan Peele, um, and um, Michael McDonald. And there and there were just so. Um, also, we had like new, the newcomers at the time were like and this comedian named Angela Johnson. Oh yeah, and bon, quee, quee. yes, <laughs> quee, bon, quee, quee. and then so we were all freshmen in that that time it was like season 13 and I was trying to like 
get to know people, but I was also trying to just like stay in my lane, just try to show what I can do. And I wrote some sketches that ended up on air, which was great. But there was also a writer's strike at that time. And I hadn't really found my voice to Quita to be like, hey, we work together on this show. How do I connect with you? Like, I just like retreated into the dark. Like I just left it up to like representatives or whatever to handle my career. Mm -hmm. And for anyone who's listening, that is not how it works. Your representatives do not handle your career. You handle it. You tell them what you need. You, and if they're not working out for you, you let them go and you you keep hustling and getting what you need. But I just kind of like faded into the dark and like let decided like, oh, they'll figure it out for me. And they didn't. And so um, so I went through a period, like a long period of just like, like not knowing how to get back on there. And um, uh, I remember being a host at a restaurant and having to bring like, uh, I think I brought Michael McDonald and Jordan Peele into this restaurant to, and brought them to their table. Oh. Girl, that was humbling. <laughs> like, like a year after the show to be like, huh? Did they remember working with you or like? Oh, of course, of course yeah. they did. But it was still humbling. Like, like I remember when Us was coming out and uh, Jordan Peele came to UCB to talk. I asked him a question and he was like, so good to see you. Like, we were like kikiing and stuff. And then the, the question ended up being, like, I asked him a question like, are you trying to like continue writing for, are you going to like switch it up and feel like you need to write for white people? Uh, Cause all of your works seem to have a, like be about the black experience. And are you going to like quote mainstream, uh, try to want to work on things like that. And the, my question ended up going viral, like as like some sort of like, uh, cause he answered like, I'm not interested in doing that. And so they made it like, he is not interested in working with white people like you know how media sometimes can make yeah. it more salacious than it was but really it was just like two people who hadn't seen each other in a long time having a conversation like I'm so impressed that you always wanted to be a director and then you went through this journey as a, a sketch performer and now you're finally directing and writing which is something he's always wanted to do and I didn't know that about him until you know get out and us and then here I am, somebody who's always write, been writing and felt like I had to kind of like, but I always loved performing and I felt like I had to choose because I was told early on, you have to pick which one. Mm -hmm. So I picked the performing when I do always, I do love writing so much. And so it was just like a conversation about like what that was. Yeah. But yeah no, they knew who I was, but it was still kind of <laughs> embarrassing. That's, I mean, I feel like for one, like for you to say, I think the, the like the eye opening part for me that what gave me chills a little bit was the fact that you like you you keep you kept doing stuff and then like you found a home like you found like mad tv and that's where you fit at that time mm -hmm, you know I mean? mm -hmm. and i think that is something great and this is a life le lesson i've been learning the older you get is something great about like things that aren't for you that you let it go you know mm. and, and what the next thing's coming is probably it's probably got your you know what i'm saying like the, the hell date thing you know like there was this you know it could co be considered some kind of rejection right and then growlings and that could be some type of you know rejection is like kind of how you know people take it and then here it is with open arms a place that you fit in a place that you grow and a place that you get to be who you are. And I think it's something important about that because a lot of times we try to fit or force ourselves in places where we don't fit. And then mm. we spend all that time with, you know, trying to, you know, make it work. Or if I could do this, or like you said, if I could, I'll just put on a wig. And, but guess what? You, as you, um, you know, you were perfect and you get, you found a place where, in where that's where you belong. And I think that that's like, that's the beauty. Girl, of, you just said a word right there. Girl, it's Sunday. You know, we're preaching. Low key. <laughs> we are no, preaching. But I think that's something like across the board in life. You know, some friends, friends, relationships, mm -hmm. jobs. Yes. You know, cars. You know, some cars, let me get rid of this trap. You know, like, <laughs> um, but it's like, it's something, it's something like, 
I want to say peaceful, but it's just something dope about yes. being where you're supposed to be because you can't force that. You can't, nobody can duplicate and try to be who they want. Like it's you, who you are and what you, you know, what you bring to the table. So I just like, you know, and I thought that was so dope. And I'm just going to say like knowing you without knowing your background and history, you are the same. You've been a powerhouse. You've been very passionate. You've been the host with the most loving, caring, you know, and I just think that those qualities, they speak volumes and like, you want to work with people like that. So. Thank uh-oh. you so much for saying that, Tapita. But I, I, I think you're so right. Like we get told so much in this industry, like what we have to do and all these rules, but what is really meant for you. And, and I'm glad you use that across the board, like with relationships too. I mean, I, I remember even before I met my husband, I was like, really trying to make this one relationship like work i was just like he is like everything like me he's he has he's a a, i'm caribbean he's like he's caribbean he's an only child he's in the arts i gotta make this work we had like nothing in common and that man was like also not doing a lot (laughs) and and i was just like forcing this like person who didn't even really have a job but I was just like on the surface it seems like this matched but like the sensibilities that we had didn't match at all and then here when I met my current husband um and he's Filipino and I was just like oh he's not black I want the blackness and but the thing that we have so much in common with both being first essentially first generation having um, grown up with, you know, parents uh, who speak a different language at home, a different accent, um, understanding like what it is to hustle. And he, he found his career a little late in life too. Um, Like, uh, and we just, we, we had, we love the same movies. We laughed about the same things. We talked for like four hours on our first date. And so he's like, these are the things that, you know, and even though I had all of that, I still was trying to make this other thing work. Yeah. Even though all of that was presented, I still try to make this other thing work. Yeah. And and so that's the, the other thing too. And even with life, and I'm so glad I uh, realized like, I don't have to force myself into this. You don't. I have something right here that's working very well. And um, e- even though also with life, I was told like, oh, you can't be a writer performer. That's like, you're doing a lot the, the most. But girl, don't you know the things that I was doing well were all the things that I could write and perform on? Even with Hell Date, I wasn't writing those things, but I got to perform and create a yeah. little bit of the of the things. With uh, Mad TV, I got to write and perform. And now with Dear White People, I was on the show as a character. And then now on this last season, I get to write and perform as well. So it just felt like such a confirmation from the universe. Yeah. It's like don't it's the the dreams that you're asking for if they make sense that it's going to work out exactly and i just i love i mean i just love the fact that like what you want you you're getting it you know and and it's people said you couldn't do it and and it's like but i can and i am yeah so, you know and i think that's that's like dope to take away from and then the fact that you had their humbling experience with with you know seating uh, <laughs> but the thing is, I think that like, this is the thing about life too, that I learned. And I think, um, is that like there, there are seasons, there are seasons, mm-hmm. right? And it's just yes, like girl. up and down, you know, you know, it's not going to be summer forever, no matter if you live in LA or not, it's, you know, it's right. going to be cold at night. Um, and it's, you know, like, it's one of those things where you, 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 you gotta be okay with like, um, you know, be, the darkness too. Like the sunset is dark. You know, people have mm-hmm. seasons of like everything not working. But you know, it the sun it does shine. It it pop back up. It creep back up. And I think it's one thing to know that like you know your talent's undeniable, and you know life is life, and to ride the storms and like to just you know like it's like improvising. Like yes and yeah okay yeah I'm working this but I'm gonna do this and this and this and this. And I think that like, that's a really like full circle moment to, to be in that yes. place, to be, in, to be now, you know, where you are. Um, no, dope. I'm so glad you did it with the seasons and, and the sun and the dark. That is so beautiful. And so girl, you're, 
Yes. I don't know. I We're, think I'm here this Sunday. No, but that's exact. I feel the same way about it. It is exactly that. And I also feel like, you know, look, would I have loved to have been able to like, you know, buy my parents a house when I turned 30? Sure. I mean, I still can't do it right now and I'm not 30 or when I was 25. I, yes. But all of these bumps in the road have actually made me a better, like anytime you meet like really dope people, they've always gone through some stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they've just lived dope people who have a good attitude, who are not bitter about it. They are actually the best people to be around because they just have a really great perspective on life. You know what I mean? And then the people who got it real easy and never really had anything like to that was hard, it's kind of hard to kind of relate to them. And they, they have, they don't even, they're not seeing the world in the same way. Do you know what I'm saying? Like we, I mean, we see this right now, even within our own, um, not to make it about politics, but like, <laughs> The reason why it's so important to have people of color and um, trans people and uh, gay people and people who have disability, who have, have quote unquote disabilities and stuff like that in positions of power and influence is because they have more of a scope of what the landscape of the world looks like. Yeah. If you're just operating from just like uh, one per lane, which for the most part has been white and male you you're you're not even understanding what people are like living like in the world if you've yeah. never put in poor then you don't understand what poverty is like if yeah. you've never um been overlooked you don't you're not necessarily empathetic to those things in a real way which is why it's important to have that so that people can like start to learn about each other and empathize with each other's experiences so i now you know um I know when I was like 20, I used to look at people who were like, uh, I was like, oh, that's so sad. They're, that was their one album. Mm, too bad. But like now I'm like, they did that album. That album was really dope. Thank yeah. gosh that they did that. Like I now have a better perspective about things and like what it means to contribute as an artist. Um, anyway, I, I, I could go on. But like one of my friends, she, I met her um at a wedding um uh, two years ago um or last year rather her name is kim hill she was the what the original woman on the black eyed peas okay. and like i just loved hearing her story about like sh people could be like oh man fergie got it over her but she's like living her life and she was like we had a beautiful moment when we were together and i i kept my the integrity that I wanted to do as an artist and I didn't want to go in the direction that they were going in, but we are all still friends and I'm so proud of what the group has done. And I, I, did, I just love that because sometimes in this industry, people get put as like winners and losers. Like you're a winner if you're Beyonce, but you're a loser if you're um, one of those Destiny's Childs that no one like has the name of, or you're, you know, you're a Michelle or you're a Kelly, which is crazy. Like Michelle and Kelly are not losers. I love and Kelly. I'm like, I'm Kelly. Yes. Like Kelly. <laughs> um, oh, Kelly's going to be in this new film I'm in. I really? Bad Hair. Okay. Bad it's, Hair. Uh, it's on October 23rd on Hulu. If anyone can watch it, please watch it. Okay. That's dope. Oh, what did you do in this in this film? Did you are you performing or writing or both? No, no, I am performing. I have a, a little part in it. It's by it's from Justin Simeon, who did Dear White People. This is his like second feature film. It's um it's in time for uh, Halloween. Uh, it's it's um it's set in the nineties, um and at like a kind of like a BET era where the new Jackson swing was like in full effect. It's shot on like film Blair Underwood. Um, uh, I'm, like I'm just listing all the nineties era people, MC light, okay. uh, is, uh, in, in there. Um, oh, Jason Vander, James Vanderbeek is in, these are the nineties people, but it's starring, uh, L Lorraine, who is this phenomenal, um, actress who's the lead of it. And she's, 
she's going to, she's going to be a star or she is a star and people will know more of her. Nicole Byer from UCB is also in it. Um, Oh my God. And Usher, uh, speaking of the nineties is also in it. And Jay (laughs) Farrow. So it's got a lot of, it's, and Lena Waithe is also in it. Um, There's just so many like dope people um, that are um, in it. It's it's funny and it's scary and it's perfect. It's it's called Bad Hair. It's about- Uh, It premiered at Sundance. It premiered at Sundance, yeah. Okay, perfect. Oh, that's dope. I'm so happy for you. I'm happy to hear that. Thanks. Yes. I'm talking too much. Talking something. I wanted to ask you what it was like selling the show. Um, oh yes. Um. Yes. Um. Well, my friend Ash, she lives in Atlanta. Uh, we were writing a show called Angry Black Woman. It was, it was supposed to be like our version of our broad city. And, um, was, and was the one that was in Just for Laughs. Yes, exactly. It was at Just for Laughs. We went to Just for Laughs with her. Just for Laughs is so dope. Um. Man, I, I wish I was there like every year. Like that was my first time ever being in there. And Maybe next year. It was so year. incredible. <laughs> yes, it's amazing. Um, yeah. So Ash and I, this is um, that was the year that Girls Trip just came out, and like Tiffany was a, a breakout, um, and we had like a full conversation with like Judd Apatow, and Judd, just just for last, like me, Gina Yashere and um, like Jackson McQueen. Uh, we were all like, cause he had said some, some crazy stuff at uh, just for laughs talking uh-huh. about how um, living in living color had held back Jim Carrey. And we were like, what? Yeah. And so we came for him and just for laughs. But like, these are the things that you can't do in life. Like, walking down the street, being able to like have a conversation with Jeff Apatow to be like, Hey, that wasn't cool. Like that's what you get at like Jeff for laughs. It was so dope. Anyway, our show angry black women did not, um, we didn't get a chance to make it yet, but we got a lot of meetings from it. And, um, and this is why it's great to have relationships. Um, our manager at the, um, at the time set us up with this meeting at Ed Helms's company. Um, uh, which is Pacific Electric uh, Picture Company. And we ended up pitching um, uh, the show, another show idea there. And it was about Ash's experience being in a tech business incubator for women of color. Okay. And they really loved the idea. And we went out to pitch it to three different places, Pop TV, which has done Schitt's Creek, um, FX and um, BET. Mm-hmm. And, BT ended up buying it and it was so dope because the um, Rose Catherine was one of the executives and she had run into Ash at the Image Awards because Ash's mom uh, also is a director Ayoka Chinzera she had directed an episode of Queen Sugar that had a um, was nominated and so she ran into Ash like right after the pitch like maybe a couple of days after the pitch and she was like ooh this is a sign and sure enough it was like she we we sold the show to BET and it was so great. Like I remember I was working at a girl, I was working with old people that <laughs> senior citizens at a place teaching them improv, how to oh, cook. like oh. girl, this was ni- 2019. This was just last year. And I was just like, what is going on with my life? Y'all. I had, oh, a, I had a vision board, like uh-huh. sell a show, be on an animated series. Um, get my writer's guild card. This was all my 2019 goals. And I, and this was now April of 2019. And I was like, Ooh, I don't know what's happening. And, okay. um, the executive at Pacific electric called us a conference called us. And he was like, you sold it to BT. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I just started crying right there in the little, um, senior citizen break room. <laughs> Congratulations. And like, thank you so much, girl. And so I quit my job there a month later with no work, mind you. Like I didn't, it, when you sell a show, you don't get to working right away. Like a year later, uh, I mean, it's like eight months later was when we finally saw a check from that moment. But okay. I just quit the job right then and there. And I was like, you know what? This is, uh, I have a bigger purpose than this. And I love all of you guys here at the senior home, but I'm, I'm writing for television now. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, I started Immediately, yeah, I got a temp job at Disney to, to like while I figured it out, and then I started writing my spec script 
for to write for television because I was like, I need to get sh- make sure that I get on a show this year so I learn my craft even more. And that spec script was what got me onto Dear White People. Yeah, and I was, and so it was just so great. Like, and then at the end of. 2019, my little whole, my list showed up, like all of the things I had asked for. I had literally gotten the WGA card, started writing on a show, sold a show. Like it was all everything that happened on my, my little list. And I was just so thankful about it. Yeah. That's dope. You know, um, I had another comedian who, uh, who loves vision boards. His name Ramon Rivas. The second <clears throat> Do you know him? Yes. No, but yes, Ramon. I believe in a vision board. But he um he taped uh HBO. They had like a Latinx or a Latino version. Uh and he, like he had a lot of stuff on his uh vision board. Oh wait, I do know Ramon Rivas. I saw him at Just for Laughs. He's yeah. so funny. I actually yeah. saw him that year. Okay, sorry, but Yeah, but no, I just I mean I think it's dope. Everybody knows that I work in the in the medical field, in the nursing world. And I wanted to ask, have you had any like unexpected trips to the emergency room Mm -hmm. in your life? No, I have not. But I did. My one medical thing that I didn't go to the I've never really been to the emergency room. I've been fortunate that I've never had any knock on wood um, uh, issues like that. But I remember when I first started dating. Ramil, my now husband, Mel, um, I, you know, it's the, t- it's a frisky time, you know, you're, you can't get enough of each other. And uh-huh. then I remember <laughs> going to the bathroom and seeing red and uh-huh. I was like, Oh my God, who is this person? I have gone, something terrible is going on with me. And I remember calling him like, I am dying. I am dying. And <laughs> Wait, it, it turned was... out that I go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. It turned out I had eaten a lot of beets. Girl, shut up. Because that's my that's my pee story too. Mm-hmm. This happened to me, and I just talked to another comedian about it. I um and I, I had the same probably thought processes as you did because I had was with a, a guy that I was dating, and mm-hmm. you know, we had messed around um like maybe the night before. And mm-hmm. the next day I was at work, I had Mediterranean food, first time ever. They had mm-hmm. beet salad, or, you know, there's beets in their salad. I, you know, and I, that was my first time eating beets. I did not know, um, you know, that it makes yes. your red or pink or whatever, depending on how much you eat. Would you believe that, okay, so I self-diagnosed myself um, <laughs> with, uh, with some kind of, uh, you know, like, I was like, he, he busted my bladder. Like, you know, I was like the dude. Yes, yes. <laughs> Exactly. Like, busting my bladder. And I was like, I was a little bit like, yeah, he busting my bladder. But then I was like, oh no, he busting my bladder. Um, <laughs> um, but then like, you know, and I, I tested my own urine at work and it was negative. Um, and then I, I went to the emergency room because I was like something wrong with me. Cause I, you know, I think I ate leftovers the next day and it, you know, it kept happening that my pee was right. red or pink. And I wound up in the emergency room. They tested me. It was negative. I was like, I need to see a specialist. So I went to a urologist and um, and I had really good insurance. So they were just like, yes, you can, whatever you want. We, yeah. And I went, <laughs> I went to a specialist and uh, they did like a diagnostic test where they like, uh, of course, they put me to sleep. Um, and then they did like, uh, I can't remember the name of the test, but uh, it was inconclusive. There was nothing wrong with me. Um, and uh, you know, my mom had told me my whole life that I had sickle cell trait. So, you know, oh, I'm, no. you know I'm telling everybody and I got the sickle cell trait out, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it meant, and then I got tested and then it found out I didn't have the sickle cell trait so my whole <laughs> life. I avoided dating men that had sickle cell because. Oh was, my God. No girl. Are you yeah, serious? Yeah. It was just like one of those moments. It was just like, okay. And then. No one ever, I just attributed to beats after, you know, I realized, you know, maybe I did research, but it wasn't at that moment. It was later that I was like, oh, it was the beats that did that. None of the doctors catched it. They was like, come on, you know, pay me your copay. Come on, get this. Right. 
Come on. <laughs> Isn't that something? Like, they could at least be like, did you eat beef? It's such an easy first question. And that's, that's now my first. If anything look weird, you know, I'm just like, did you eat beets? And, okay, mm-hmm. did you know? like, because now I know, you know. And right. that, girl, I almost, oof. And I kept it a secret, too. And I'm like, this is kind of, I don't want to tell everybody because something wrong with me. But, you know, did he bust my bladder? No, he didn't. Okay, you know, and it was just weird, but I feel you. I can't believe we had the same um, <laughs> I can't yes. believe it. Oh, see, I knew we were connected. Yo, in beats, <laughs> beware. <laughs> yes, um, I knew we were connected in that way. Um, do you have any home remedies that you take, like, when you get sick? Um, I have been doing... So I've been eating a lot. So as you get older, I've been learning a lot about antioxidants. Like Mm -hmm. that is really, there's so much free radicals in our world. And so I've been eating a lot of vitamin, taking vitamin E supplements. And then I didn't know this girl, but people with melanin need more vitamin D. And we are always deficient in it. So it doesn't matter that you're brown unless you're in the sun all the time and you need like a little supplement to keep your vitamin D levels higher. So I've been taking those kinds of supplements as well. So, um, and eating, I I like eating foods that have it like, you know, spinach, kale, stuff like that. Goji berries, what have you versus the supplements. But sometimes if you can't get all that, you, I've been taking in more supplements. Oh my God. I'm an old person now. I'm taking supplements. <laughs> oh my goodness, girl. Yeah. But I, what am I taking? I, I do apple cider vinegar. And I know mm. I know it's like people like, oh, it's not good. But I don't know. I'm, I'm just at the point where I'm like, okay, I, I'll see what it do. And I do. Yeah. I, I drink it for, to lose my Corona, my pandemic pounds, I say like to try to. Oh, is it really help with weight loss? I didn't know that. It's, but it's, it supposedly does everything, but, um, uh, but you know, I don't know. Don't don't nobody quote me on if it's safe. Well, I'm not gonna okay, say. Okay. Okay. But you know, I've I've been using it and I'm slimming down. Uh, <laughs> <along> <laughs> you look great. You have one of the best bodies I know. Just well, like a brick house. Just <laughs> very exciting. Need a Coke bottle, girl. I be them, girl. I don't know. Be them waist trainers. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You do have a snatch waist. That is so true. <laughs> yeah, you really do. Thank you, girl. I know we, I feel like uh, we are, we are winding down on time. So I just wanted to, to, you know, to get a a moment for you to share uh, what's next for you and where could people find you? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Tequita, I love you so much. Thank you very, very much for doing this. Uh, You've always been such a great, not only a great person, but always giving people a platform and I really appreciate it. So um, the things that people can find me at my first name dot my last name. I was trying to find something more creative for Instagram, but I did it. So it's Dehaley dot Hall at Instagram or just Dehaley at on Twitter. I'm not really very prolific on either one, but please watch Bad Hair um, when it comes out on October 23rd on Hulu. It streams. Oh, I'm going to try to also do, um, I think I'm going to do a Zoom um watch party so i'll invite you to that okay yeah, uh, so that we could watch it together okay and, well, I'm uh, your episode out before then let me see i'm writing it down you said is it wait october 24th yeah so october 23rd and then dear white people won't be out because we're shooting it right now so i'm episode seven of dear white people but we just started shooting like friday was the first day of shooting the last season it's the last season but I have a nice little part in that series um I play Dorica which is a um a parody Oprah like character so you know they also they always like spoofs a show or something on the on on the show so I'm I'm a spoof person so I have just like a reoccurring yeah okay but (laughs) so please watch your white people on Netflix catch up there's three seasons on there I'm on each of those seasons um, and then watch Hulu's, uh, and then when my, hopefully this show that I do for BET happens, I don't know. We just turned in our first draft to them. So they have to let us know what they think of the next draft. And then we have, it's just for, for the, you just get a pilot and it, a pilot is just the first episode. And if they like the first episode, they may, um, decide to like 
shoot it or make it a series. But okay. right now we're just at the first draft stage. So that's oh, what's happening. Dope. Yay. So y'all yes. check Haley Hall out and I'm so happy to connect. Stay safe in those streets. Stay creative. Um, and I can't wait to see you in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see you in real life too. Real life too. Let's definitely make that happen. Yes. So you guys, this has been Love Notes by Tequita Love. And our guest was the Haley Hall. Uh, you can probably most likely get um, information on where to find her in the uh, description of this episode. Um, that's it. See you next time. See you next time. Bye. Love you, girl. Love you too.